All right, this is the uh, GoPro Hero 10 Black. It's recording at 5.3K at 60 frames per second. I have the battery door open so it won't overheat. Uh, it's attached to the headrest using a uh, headrest mount. So uh, we'll see how it does in the you know dusk conditions. ISO is set at max 3200. Uh, no EV compensation, bit rate set to high, HVEC, and sharpness set to high. So let's see, me and my wife are going out to eat dinner. She may not like me recording, but it is what it is. I'm gonna have to uh, censor some of, some of the stuff that she says, you know? might not be PG <laughs> so I'm riding in an uh, LS 2005 LS 430 117,000 miles really good car one of the best ever made we're gonna go out to eat dinner at a Japanese restaurant hey babe I'm trying out my GoPro by the way so uh, refrain from cursing I want to get the modern face, you know I don't want to be on the thing. Huh. Put it out. College graduates, the Chinese government has also recently introduced a new policy to eliminate retakes of the college entrance exam. Since the college entrance exam resumption in 1977, China has implemented it 40 times so far. China. Students who do not do well on the first try can take it again the following year or later. The abolition of retakes means that such students will not be able to study in public schools and thus oh, lose the opportunity to retake the exam unless they attend private high schools where tuition is very high. Four provinces have already issued explicit rules to eliminate retakers. Chinese people consider the best job being a government official. It means money and privileges, followed by a higher paying job. A low paying job not only makes life difficult, it also means a low social status and the loss of the ability to protect oneself and one's loved ones in a system that lacks fairness and guarantees. As a result, parents are reluctant to send their children to vocational and technical education institutes. Some agencies enroll students in vocational and technical education colleges, teach them introductory courses in the first year, and then send them to factories in the second year, probably as interns, a form of super cheap labor. As student workers, businesses are not required to sign formal labor contracts with students or provide any insurance. According to media reports of China, enterprises are very fond of such a rain. They will sign a contract with the school and give the students a monthly labor cost of RMB 3000, but in reality, they will only give the students RMB 1000, as part of which will be returned to the school. Everyone can hear it. Some of the labor conditions in the I'm factories saying. are very poor, such as no air conditioning in the hot I don't want the way in the video. work areas, poor food and lodging <coughs> conditions, and even access to the bathroom is strictly controlled. At the end of June 2021, more than 100 underage students from a vocational high school in Hubei province were arranged to work in a factory in Shenzhen under the name of an internship. The students were forced to work more than 10 hours a day, including heavy lifting work. The teachers at the school informed the students that one student had already been disqualified from the internship and expelled from the school due to two absences. They said that they were required to obtain permission to take sick leave or personal leave in the future, otherwise it would be counted as an absence. One of the students, a 70 
China has accelerated, especially among Fortune 500 companies. Recently, South Korea's Samsung Group decided to close down its shipyard in Ningbo, triggering employees to strike for days. Since September 8th, workers have been campaigning for their rights, rallying the banners, and marching in the factory for several days. Workers have chanted slogans like, I want to eat. I want to eat. On September 9, 2021, thousands of employees gathered at the factory to demand compensation. The general manager, five deputy general managers, and six other Korean executives were all present at the time to speak to the crowd. <laughs> The general manager told the employees that he had previously communicated with the union, asking them to remain calm and act rationally to defend their rights. However, the two sides did not reach an agreement. Samsung offered an N plus one compensation plan for the terminated workers. N means converting the years of work into an equal number of months. For example, 10 years of work is 10 months. N plus one means compensation for 11 months of salary. Samsung employees, on the other hand, hope to receive 3N compensation. Article 40 of China's labor contract law recognizes the method of N plus one compensation. Some employees put out a banner Grateful to Samsung for decades of being here. Do not give up. Do not leave. We have the elderly and children to support. We have to work. We have to provide for our family. The intention of wanting Samsung to stay is very obvious. Samsung Heavy Industries has been preparing to move out for some time. The local Chinese government presiding over the shipyard has signed the paperwork to take back the 78.5 hectares of land from it. The local government has also accomplished and exceeded its work quota to develop 160 hectares of low utility land. According to the local government's online documents, redeveloping the land is part of the Communist Party's plan for industrial upgrade aimed at clearing the cage to make way for new birds, a common saying meaning to replace old industries with new ones. Clearing the cage to make way for new birds is an industrial restructuring strategy of the CCP. It was proposed in May 2008 by the then Provincial Party Secretary, who now serves as a standing committee member of the CCP's political bureau. It aims to relocate or eliminate low-end industries in the region and introduce and develop high-end industries so as to achieve the final goals of industrial replacement, restructuring, and upgrading in the region. Since 2020, a rumor has been circulating that Samsung's pullout was due to the government's unilateral repossession of land, where the government gave Samsung compensation between 4 billion and 5 billion RMB, or about 620 million to 770 million US dollars. Samsung Heavy Industries is surrounded by chemical plants, and the local government would like to repossess the land to build a chemical zone. However, such a claim has not been officially confirmed. Ningbo Shipyard was established in 1995, the first shipbuilding base of Samsung Heavy Industries in China. Its products are mainly sold to South Korea, and it employs more than 4,500 people. For over 20 years, Samsung Heavy Industries has provided decent employment for the locals. Its current average monthly salary is around 10,000 RMB. New employees who have just joined the company can earn close to 3,000 RMB per month. It has been reported that Samsung's operations in China, including cell phones, home appliances, and shipbuilding, have been moving or relocating back to South Korea. 
The withdrawal of South Korean companies from China has been ongoing since South Korea agreed to the U.S. deployment of the Thought Defense System in 2016, a move that has triggered strong anti-Korean sentiment in China. In October 2019, Samsung closed down its last cell phone factory in China. In June 2020, Samsung announced it would move its monitor production line to Vietnam. In May 2021, Line Friends, an original cartoon brand of South Korea's instant messaging company, Line, closed its flagship store in Shanghai. Prior to that, Line Friends had been closing stores in various parts of China, including Beijing. Sources say that Line Friends plans to close all its stores in China. After the U.S.-China trade war broke out, coupled with the impact of the pandemic, the global supply chain has recognized the importance of breaking away from Red China. News of major international manufacturers leaving China has been piling up. Japanese electronic giant Toshiba has decided to close its last factory, Toshiba Dalian, at the end of September 2021. On September 11, a few employees told Chinese media, Time Weekly, that they had heard that Toshiba Dalian was losing money and couldn't do it anymore. Toshiba Dalian was established in September 1991. The report says Toshiba's business structure has changed and decided to dissolve and liquidate Toshiba Dalian due to the discontinuation of the production of industrial motors and signal transmitters. In late April 2021, Panasonic from Japan announced that it would close its dry cell factory in Shanghai in 2022. Panasonic plans to build factories in Thailand and Indonesia to supply the Asian market and build production lines in Central America, targeting the North American market. Other Japanese companies that have withdrawn or partially withdrawn from China include Olympus, the Optimal well, Energy going. Giant, Electronics Manufacturer, Omron, no, no, Mitsubishi, yeah, Toshiba Machine, Sharp, Nikon, Sony, Nintendo, etc. In April 2020, the Japanese government announced an emergency program in response to the pandemic, providing 2.3 billion U.S. dollars in subsidies to Japanese companies that want to evacuate China. More than 1,700 Japanese companies have applied for the subsidy. In addition to companies from South Korea and Japan, there is a general trend for international companies to move their industrial chains out of mainland China. In January 2021, IBM was said to have completely shut down its research institute in China. German electromechanical giant Hanning was revealed to have pulled out of Shenzhen and relocated its product line to a factory in India. Foreign companies that have also moved their production lines out of China include Apple, Microsoft, Google, Dell, Hewlett Packard, and other internationally renowned companies. In March 2021, the world's second largest fund management giant, the US-based Vanguard Group Incorporated, announced it would pull out of China. According to people familiar with the matter, they had reviewed the viability of the low-cost model in China several years ago, and the final verdict was that it won't work. While the Communist Party claims that the economy has rebounded from the pandemic since 2020, Vanguard Group is more concerned about China's constantly changing rules and regulations. In May 2021, the media reported that iRobot, a U.S. floor-sweeping robot company, would end its contract with the Hong Kong-based Jian E Group on December 31, 2021. Jian E Group's manufacturing facility is in Shenzhen. In recent years, iRobot has gradually moved its production plant from China to Malaysia. In November 2020, Experian, Experian. the world's largest personal credit giant, said it would withdraw from mainland China. According to reports, Experian China was to phase out with a complete shutdown by the end of April 2021. Some analysts say the reason for Experian's withdrawal is related to the disorderly competition in the mainland credit market, where bad money drives out good. On March 8, 2021, India's business... Tends to ship seven to temper. Yeah. In October 2020, many media this to TSMC, Hanhai, Wisp.
have reached double digits. In October 2019, one of Europe's three biggest outlet giants in China, retailer Woomart Stores Incorporated, hold set up by the two companies. In June, for sold 80% of its China shares. At the beginning of it, companies with favorable land and tax. China. However, over the past few years, an increasing number of international companies have withdrawn from China as a result of the following factors. First is the rising cost of land and labor. The low labor cost has been the most critical advantage of Chinese manufacturing in winning the global competition. However, China is slowly losing this edge. In recent years, labor costs have risen in China, while the per capita labor cost in Southeast Asia has been comparatively lower. In addition, countries in Southeast Asia are now offering various preferential policies to attract foreign investment. Second, since the U.S.-China trade war started, the U.S. has increased tariffs on Chinese goods significantly, making many multinational companies intend to relocate their supply chains out of China or reduce their dependence on China. Third, the pandemic has impacted global supply chains significantly. Fourth, China is using trade practices to force other countries to bow to the CCP. More international companies have realized the risks of doing business with China. Fifth, the CCP's authoritarian system changes rules and policies randomly, unable to offer a stable investment environment. The Chinese government is administratively inefficient, passing the buck to each other, and the investment process is cumbersome with many hurdles. Dealing with Chinese authorities is mentally draining. The high cost of time and expenses, including the mental, physical, and material resources it takes, is extraordinary, especially the high cost of bribery is unparalleled in the world. The massive withdrawal of foreign investment has a significant impact on China's economy. It is reported that foreign companies are holding the lifeline of China's first-tier cities. Among the foreign megacities in China, Guangzhou has more than 20,000 foreign enterprises, which accounts for more than 62% of the city's total industrial output. Foreign capital contributes two-thirds of the total industrial output in Shanghai, and up to 70% to Shenzhen's economy. In addition, the foreign capital holds an overwhelming advantage in coastal cities such as Suzhou and Xiamen. According to public records, these foreign-owned factories have contributed about 30 million jobs to China, a figure that could triple if we added the related supporting domestic enterprises. The wave of capital flowing out of China has sparked much debate and concern. Many Chinese lament that the Communist Party has pushed the public to hate the US, Japan, Korea, Australia, and many other countries that have supposedly offended the Communist Party. But when their companies do pull out, it is the Chinese people who suffer. An internet user commented, Toshiba in Dalian, Samsung Heavy Industries in Ningbo, and Ericsson in Nanjing have all pulled out, leaving thousands of workers facing unemployment at an advanced age. Only now the market has been cruel, and they employ only workers under the age of 35. With so many older, unemployed people, can they still find employment? At Samsung Shipyard, where terminated workers were protesting, one slogan says, Less than 3 n compensation. We refuse to sign. Please let the party be the judge. This slogan shows that some Chinese workers haven't yet realized who has already made the decision to drive out the foreign companies on their behalf. of Evergrande Group, China's second largest property developer, continues to worsen as its wealth products, Evergrande Wealth, failed to pay on September 8th. Many lenders doubt Evergrande's ability to honor its debts. As a result, victims in various parts of China have launched large-scale protests for several days in a row.
On September 13, hundreds of people stormed Evergrande's headquarters in Shenzhen, and government officials mobilized a large number of police officers to clear the site. According to Evergrande Group's earnings report released on August 31, 2021, Evergrande's total debt amounted to 1.97 trillion RMB, or 305.3 billion US dollars, as of June 30, close to an all-time record high. Evergrande confessed on August 31st that work on some of its real estate projects had been halted after delays in payments to suppliers and contractors. Evergrande Wealth is the name of an app. It's officially defined to be the comprehensive wealth management service platform of Evergrande Group. In the course of running its business, there have been local governments issuing risk warnings against its products. On January 7, 2020, a government agency in Hunan province issued an official document cautioning against Evergrande's financial products. Evergrande Wealth issued a statement the next day, responding that the small and medium-sized enterprise financial products sold by the company's agents were officially filed in the financial exchange and fell under the company name of Evergrande Finance. The statement was released to the public through Evergrande Wealth's WeChat public page. In September, after Evergrande Wealth defaulted on the payment, it started to delete all the articles about employees purchasing the wealth products and conducting performance appraisals based on their purchases. At the same time, it disbanded all WeChat groups that promoted Evergrande's wealth products. See, over the years, many investors have invested money in the company like Evergrande because they believe that if things eventually become unstable, the government will always rescue them. But in the past few years, the Chinese authorities have shown determination to keep China's unsustainable debt problem down. That's what it's called. Do you even know? No. Shit. Oh, yeah, they are. Wait, are you? Later, some victims reported that the local police station had received a list of all the investors oh, and called them one by one to work on them. The videos post- <sighs> Alright, dinner is finished. On our way back home. Alright, let's put something else on besides China. concert film featuring Taylor Swift, Aaron Desner, Jack Antonoff, and a guest appearance by Justin Vernon. Been acting up lately, I don't know why. Hey, this is Tommy Sapanovich. I'm the owner of Dago's Seafood Restaurant. I'm excited to announce the opening of our newest look. The victims have been deleted. Multiple rights defenders groups are being monitored in messages. I'm gonna get copyrighted. Oh well.
Hmm? You don't buy me boba. We got ice cream at home. What ice cream?
Alright, let's go. <sighs> GoPro Hero 10. Oh, look, it didn't overheat. 